Hello, Miller. Hello, Ennis. Hello, Kaylin. It's your grandma here. Now, I'm going to tell you a story today because you can't be with me. But I'm in my garden. Can you hear? Because you all like the garden. And do you know who's in this story? Wait till I show you. Who is this? Wait, I'll turn it. Can you see better like that? Who's that? It's Ennis in the garden. Who else is in this story? Let me see this. Who is that? It's Miller, and look what he's cuddling. He's cuddling the feather duster. And who else is in this story? Let's see. Ah, uh, it's Kaylin, and Kaylin is sitting right over there under the tree, looking at all the leaves. That's right. You three boys are in this story. And I'll show you who else is in the story. We've got, we've got <gasps> Fern Fox. And you know, a couple of minutes earlier, you would probably have seen the real Fern the Fox because Fern the Fox was sitting on the patio sunbathing. Who else is in the story? Let's see. This is Bean the Badger. Bean the Badger's in the story too. Oh, he's nice and soft. And, oh, I'll need two hands for this one. You recognise this, don't you? Because you both like playing with this. This is Fergus the Frog. Wait till we give Fergus the Frog a wee go. <laughs> That's the sound a frog makes. So we've got Fern the Fox, Bean the Badger, Fergus the Frog, and this special person in this story is, here he is, here, wait for hold him up beside me. It's, it's the brownie of the butter burn. And if you listen very, very closely, you'll maybe be able to hear the butter burn. It's just down here behind the fence. I'm going to turn this round so that so that you can see. In a wee minute I'm going down. Wait till I try and can't find the thing to turn it round. So I'll need to do this. I'll need to do this right, turning it round. And down here through that hole, if you listen. You might be able to hear the butter burn. Now this story takes place in Grandma's garden because this is a place where you boys like to come and play. I thought maybe we could go for a walk around the garden so that you can see all the bits that you like. Right, you ready? I'll turn it round. I'll turn it round so that you can see where we are. Very, very bright sun today. We'll go for a walk. Round. Oh, on oh, the stepping stones. Wait, step over. Down the path. Oh, through all the plants. And up to the bell, and what are we going to do here? Rattle the bamboo wind chimes. Just check, see if there's any wee birds in the birdhouse. Nope. Where else will we go? Go way down here and look at the fuchsias. Because who is it that likes to eat the fuchsias, Miller? Not healthy. Right, let's go up here. Oh, and can you see who's there? Look who's there. Can you see the cat? Psst, 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 psst. I 
think that might be Simba. Yeah, that's Simba. We like to do this, don't we? I don't know if Simba likes that sound. He's having a wee look to see what's happening. Can you see that? He's going, what on earth is that noise? Now we can't go under there because Simba's there, but we'll go past the tree that's falling over. Around the other side. And... Oh, big step. All the way around the path back to the beginning. I'll ring the bell. And then we'll go back down the path. And look, here's all the things I need to tell the story. Back to me. Right, st story's ready to begin. So, boys, you were staying with me. And you were out playing in the garden. And it was a lovely day. And you were running round and round the garden, playing hide and seek. And then Miller said, I've got a great idea. Why don't we go and explore down through the hole in the fence? Because behind that is the burn. And we can go and play in the burn. So the boys climbed through the hole, the hole in the fence and they saw the burn and it was beautiful. This, the water was sparkling with the sun shining on it and it felt, oh, listen to this, can you hear that? It felt like magic. They started splashing in the burn. There was lots of sticks lying about that had fallen down from the trees. Now if you've got sticks, what about wooden spoons? You're good at wooden spoons, aren't you? You can get your wooden spoons or your sticks and you can tap them together. Can't do it with one hand. <laughs> and you can make the noise of the sticks tapping. And guess what you all did? You picked up the sticks and thought, this is going to be a great idea. We can be pirates and we can get the sticks and have swords and we can hit them together and we can make noise like pirates shouting, Arr! Well, you were having so much fun. You were making quite a lot of noise. And then a wee voice came from behind a tree and out popped and the fox and she said oh boys you need to be quiet the brownie of the butter burn is trying to sleep he's been working all night in your grandma's garden to tidy it up and he needs a bit of peace the brownie of the butter burn well grandma had told all the boys about the brownie of the butter burn and they knew that the brownie was magic brownies are wee fairies that they like to help in your house or in your garden but they do it at night but they don't want anything for it and they don't want you to speak to them because if you give them anything apart from something to eat or drink as a reward they won't come back they'll go in the half so the boys said okay Fern we'll be quiet so they started walking further along the burn but they couldn't not make a noise because it was such a great place to be the next thing that they saw in the burn was lots of boulders and they thought, let's pick up all the boulders and make a dam. So the boulders were quite heavy, so they picked up the boulders and uh, they picked up the boulders and they started dropping the boulders on top of each other. Well, the boulders made quite a bit of noise. Now, if you've got something like a wood block like this, or you could just use your wooden spoons again. But I want you to tap. Did you hear that? Tap. Make a tapping noise as if the boulders were getting dropped on top of each other. Well, you were all having such a great time. Making such a lot of noise until suddenly they heard another voice. 
and the voice said, oh, I don't think you should be doing that. We looked down and here was Bean the Badger. Bean the Badger said, the brownie of the butter bun was working in your grandma's studio tidying it up. I don't think he'll want to be woken up because he needs a bit of peace and quiet. You better be quiet. Oh, the boys said, okay. They knew that they had to be polite as well to uh, fairies so that they weren't rude to them. They said, oh, well, we better be quiet. We don't want to waken the brownie of the butter burn up. Okay, we'll be on our way. So they started walking along, further along the burn. And round about the burn, there was lots of fur cones all lying about and the boys thought, oh, let's collect these and we can take them home and give them to Grandma. So they started filling their pockets with the with the fur cones. Then they said, why don't we shake the trees and try and get more? So if you've got a shaker, Oh, everything's shaking, look. Oh, that made me dizzy. So if you've got a shaker, shake, shake, shake. So they shook all the branches of the trees and down fell even more fur cones. Well, soon their pockets were full. And they, they thought, what are we going to do with all these fur cones? Oh, well, they thought, this is a great game. Let's just fling them at each other. So they started chucking these fur cones at each other and they made you, I've got to keep saying you because it's your story, you made such a noise that suddenly there was a wee voice that said, oh, I don't think the brown of the butter bun will like that. And they looked down and here was Fergus. Fergus the frog, there he is. Let's make a wee Fergus the frog noise, hang on. So here is wee Fergus the frog sitting on a rock beside the burn. And they said, oh, the brownie the butter one isn't going to like that. You're making far too much noise. He was working in your grandma's house and he's going to be too tired. Don't wake him up. So they started walking along quietly. They said, we'd better be very, very quiet. But they just couldn't help themselves. They were making so much noise, splashing in the water, clicking all the sticks, shouting, ah, like a pirate, shaking all the branches of the trees. And then suddenly they heard a voice coming from behind a boulder. Oh, for goodness sake, I've had enough, said this voice. And here was the brownie of the butter burn in a right bad mood. He said, I can't get any peace because of the noise you're making, for goodness sake. Well, the boy said, very politely, remember, oh, I'm really sorry, sir. Sorry for waking you up. Is there anything we can do for you? He said, well, I can't go back to your grandma's house today. What am I going to do? I'm never going to go back now. You've made it, you've just wasted it. And the boys were very disappointed. Oh, they said, oh, please, it's not, it's not grandma's fault. Can we, can we fix it? And the brownie of the butter bun thought for a wee minute and he went, right, I tell you what, see if you do all my work tonight, I'll see how it goes. And if you do it well, I'll reconsider. Here he is, with his pointy hat. You see his pointy hat? Well, the boys immediately thought, right, okay, that's the best idea, because he didn't want the brownie to stop working in Grandma's house. So they went into bed. And that night, in the middle of the night, they got up and they went down the stairs. And Miller got the feather duster. Oh, can you see it? There's the feather duster. Miller likes a feather duster. So he got the feather duster and he started cleaning all the furniture. Innes got the broom and he started sweeping up all the leaves that were on the patio and around about the garden. And Kaylin got the spray and started spraying all the furniture and cleaned it all up. Everything was beautifully clean and spotless but the boys had to work all night. They were so tired that in the morning they couldn't even wake him up. Grandma had to go and waken them. That doesn't happen often. She was making their breakfast and she said, for goodness sake, boys, what's wrong with you today? You're just not waking up at all. Oh, 
Oh, well, it's because we... Oh, Miller interrupted. Ennis got a fright. <laughs> because he was just about to say, it's because we were working all night. Minute Miller interrupted and he said, eh, it's because we were up late reading bed. All right, said Grandma. Eat your breakfast. So they had a square sliced sausage and a fried egg. And then Grandma looked about and she said, look how tidy the house is. Oh, said Innes, that's because... <gasps> Caelan interrupted. I had a big coffin fit, nearly fell off his chair. Grandma was a wee bit concerned. Oh, here, Caelan, you better have your drink of water. Caelan looked at Innes and gave him a look. Nearly gave the game away there. Later on, Grandma went into her studio. And she was working on a, a wee dog, painting a dog. And the boys came in to have a wee look. And she said, will you have a look at the state of that sink? It was really manky. And somebody has cleaned it all up. Miller said, I know, it took me ages. <gasps> the boys looked at Miller. Oh no, Miller, you've given the game away. They turned round and they looked at Grandma. But Grandma was a bit corned beef. A bit hard to hear in. She never heard an awful, awful, an awful lot of things that were going on. And she turned back round and she was looking at the boys and she said, what is it? What did you say, Miller? Miller thought really quickly and he went, um, I said, it must have taken the brownie ages to clean it. Grandma turned back to her work. The boys waited. They held their breath. She said, well, he's done a really good job of it. Oh, phew. Oh, big sigh of relief. Grandma turned round and started finishing her, pic her picture. And she said, do you know, maybe we should give him, a, give him a wee reward. I think once I've finished this, we'll bake some scones. And we'll put them out for him and that'll be his wee, a wee thank you for him. Wow, the boys were relieved. And later on, when Grandma finished her painting, they went into the kitchen and they started baking scones. Then they took a wee scone and they made a tiny wee cup of coffee and put it on a plate and they took it down through the hole in the fence beside the burn and laid it on a tree stump waiting for the brownie to come and get it. But this time they didn't wait long because they were absolutely certain they didn't want to do any more work in Grandma's house at all. That is the end of this story. Did you enjoy that? Did you hear your bits? It was a magic story. A magic fairy story about the brownie and the butter bun. That's us finished. Bye bye.